Welcome back to another episode of Coin Scrum Markets RFQ. I'm Tina Baker Taylor, and I'm delighted to be joined today by David Olson from BlockFi. David, it's great to have you back. Thanks, Tina. It's great to be back. Super. So let's dig in. What are you currently seeing in the market this week? Let's talk about borrowing and lending. Sure. We're seeing huge demand on the fiat side uh, of dollars and stable coins. And the reason for that, obviously, is the climb up to all time highs at 58,000 on, on Bitcoin. Uh, but despite the pullback, we're still seeing rates in the mid teens in terms of dollar demand, which obviously dollars and stable coins are required to, to buy long positions in spot or even levered long. Uh, and conversely, on the flip side, in terms of borrowing Bitcoin and other cryptos, uh, we're seeing muted demand, even uh, with the downward move, which leads us to believe actually that it was driven more by liquidations and forced liquidations uh, of speculators rather than the kind of smart money uh, coming in and barring Bitcoin, shorting or hedging and, and driving the price down. Okay, that's interesting. So last time you were here, we talked a little bit about BTC as a payment solution. And then right after Tesla went public on their uh, Bitcoin purchase and their acceptance of uh, Bitcoin as a payment option. so. Is this going to be the start of corporate adoption? Yes, we believe corporate adoption is here to stay. Uh, at the moment, we see a huge groundswell in the number of corporate accounts that are being requested on the platform or mm -hmm. open on the platform. And we even have a two to week uh, waiting list uh, for corporate account openings. And we're hiring more people just to be dedicated to, to, to doing that. Um, and it's not it's just so exciting. It's, yeah, it's very, it's really exciting. It's very, it's very, it's very exciting, and it's really fascinating because it's not just mom and pops or people with personal LLCs that are opening mm -hmm. accounts. It's from small, small, medium enterprise to large, to large uh, businesses. We've seen, uh, you know, from window cleaners, auto glass manufacturers, a church looking to allocate to stablecoin and crypto. Uh, restaurants, uh, you name it, we're, we're seeing it. Um, and they're all looking to hold a portion of their treasury in Bitcoin or stablecoin or a mixture of both. So, you know, what do you think is driving that? Is it, it, it clearly can't just be FOMO. So, you know, one of the things that we've been talking a lot about is, you know, these large treasury allocations. Um, you know, these aren't short term positions. Is that um, corporate confidence at, you know, the kind of enterprise level, really the, the thing that's driving this? Is it a combination of, you know, just the industry gaining its momentum on its own? What, what do you think is, is the driving force behind this? I, I think it's a, a few of the things that, you know, and you touched on a couple of things there. One is just defense against inflation. Mm -hmm. uh, the U.S. is about to inject $2 trillion of, uh, of stimulus in, into the economy. And of course, mm -hmm. in Europe, we're go also going to see kind of helicopter money and, 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 fiscal, and fiscal stimulus. So I think that's, that's definitely on the minds of, of corporate treasurers and, and BTC as a store of value and defense against that. Um, mm -hmm. In Europe, obviously, there's still negative interest rates. So mm -hmm. it can be just as practical as corporate saying, I, I want to accrue some sort of interest. I need some kind of income on my, my treasury holdings. And for example, at BlockFi, we offer 8.6% on stable coins and other and single digits on other, uh, on other crypto. Uh, so that can be, that's a driver as well. And then the third thing that <laughs> you sort of touched on was FOMO um, and that you've got these, you know, MicroStrategy, Square and Tesla, huge, uh, huge companies that have allocated to their balance sheets and a corporate treasurers are saying to themselves, if I don't, then I might actually have my job might be a risk. Just I need to at least look at it now. Um, right. so maybe other S&P 500 companies to follow um, rumors about Apple and, and, and others. Right, right. Um, so, and just to, just to circle back quickly to our own experience of BlockFi, we put up a couple graphs or made a couple graphs of, you know, the, just what we're seeing. Uh, and we've seen the number of funded accounts grow by four times over 400% over the last year. And the USD notional holdings in those accounts has increased by 220% over the last year. Not, you know, it's, it's, so it's happening, you know, more frequently. And then corporate treasurers are feeling more confident about uh, adding to 
uh, their crypto and stable coin holdings. Well, and I think, you know, for, for a lot of people in finance, um, corporate treasury is still kind of this um, elusive area, you know, how, how the corporate treasury function operates. And um, when I was in transaction banking in my previous life, um, they were my constituents. Those are the people that, you know, I worked with every day. And they're not a super, um, what's the word I'm looking for, you know, fly by the seat of their pants kind of person, right? Yeah. So um, they're usually quite conservative. So I think that this is even more exciting that we're seeing um, some of these balance sheet positions being taken um, because it's a, it's a real commitment. Yeah, ab absolutely. And I think that um, if you look at sort of how, how would a corporate treasurer think about an allocation to Bitcoin? Well, mm -hmm. if they have liabilities in Bitcoin, like employees that want to be paid in Bitcoin or goods and services that are mm -hmm. denominated in Bitcoin, then it behooves them to have Bitcoin on the asset side of the balance sheet. And we're hearing, for example, in Latin America, you're seeing both employees and uh, goods uh, being denominated in Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. uh, then there's some companies that want to pay their employees a portion of the salary or electing to do that uh, in Bitcoin just as a perk to differentiate themselves against <laughs> uh, other companies. And the most yeah. famous example of that is Russell Okung, the American football player who asked for half of his salary in, in, in Bitcoin uh, and then became the highest paid player on a USD notional value <laughs> as, a as a result of that. <laughs> So it's a pretty good, a pretty good strategy. Um, yeah. I think, you know, and the other, the other thing is if you look at it from a, you know, from some of the bigger treasuries like a CIO and look and saying, how do I allocate amongst different asset classes? Um, they may, you know, they may have uh, sort of an alternatives or commodities bucket that they say, okay, I want to allocate five to 15% to gold oil and other uh, and hedge funds and other alternatives. And then Bitcoin can fit into that portion of the allocation. Um, and it's also maybe as a defensive strategy against, against inflation, again, instead of buying tips or, or, you know, Swiss franc is a defensive currency, but Swiss mm -hmm. franc is only appreciated by 8% versus the dollar of the last year, whereas we know Bitcoin is appreciated 500% plus uh, right. something. So, uh, so there's a lot of good reasons for, for corporate treasures to look at. Um, I think you know MicroStrategy just placed a bond for over. Yeah, I was just gonna just gonna ask you about that uh, convertible bond. I mean, MicroSailor is just everywhere, right? Yeah. Um, almost I mean, every conversation I have, his name comes up. So tell us more about this. Yeah. So the bond it was over a billion dollars. I think one point one billion in notional, mm -hmm. priced at zero. Uh, and that's interesting. And people say, why is it priced at zero? Well, there's a convertible option embedded where which basically turned is basically a call option on bitcoin so for the holder of the bond they get a free call option on uh the stock which is very correlated to bitcoin at the moment uh mm -hmm. and and also uh and and then on you know the asset side of the balance sheet uh for for micro strategy they have the ability to allocate you know more of their more of their assets to bitcoin so it's a bit of a win-win uh, scenario so long as MicroStrategy doesn't default on the principal amount, which hopefully their sort of day to day operations can pay for, uh, you know, for, you know, for the overhead and, um, and generate those returns. Uh, so, um, so it looks like it's a really interesting one and we'll see if it's replicated uh, across different, uh, different corporates. Awesome. Okay, two final questions. I always ask you, Bitcoin price prediction. So let's say are we going to exceed 60,000 in March and laser eyes? Yes or no? <laughs> um, I say, so I think we're in a, we're in a short term period of consolidation. So I'm not sure about 60,000 um, by, by March, uh, but I would say laser eyes. Yes. I would, um, if I, if I could have the time to actually edit my photo, then I would put later laser eyes on my- I'll do it for you. Profile. Send it to you. <laughs> okay, awesome. David, Thanks. it's always a pleasure to have you. Thanks so much for coming back. Thank you.